Welcome back to Xbox Corner, my name is Alex and today we're going to be taking a look at Sable on the Xbox Series X. This, it's a game designed around the idea of exploration and then almost a meditative state, but can this live alongside the great so think like Journey, or does this one end up falling short of its ambitions? Well first, a big thank you to Raw Fury for providing a review copy today, and with that, hit subscribe, join our growing Xbox family, and let's get started. It's a story and you take on the role of title Sable, a young girl about to face what is known here as the gliding. This it's basically a rite of passage, you're sent away from your town, family and friends to find your place in life and understand what your role will be. It's minimalistic purposely giving you this very simplistic aim as it sends you out into the landscape. You know it's not a story looking to hold your hand and tell you what path you should follow, rather it's a case of enjoy the journey, choose your own path and let curiosity do its part. I enjoyed it, it's simplistic but it gives you just enough so you have a purpose behind this adventure and how you shape and end the story then will be entirely up to you. So gameplay on this, it's all about exploration with zero combat and for an open world experience that's near unknown by today's gaming standards. It's not interested in telling you where you should go, what you should do, rather it gives you that huge open world and says well go and explore. Now in your repertoire of skills you can expect the ability to jump, you can glide in a bubble of sorts that you get early into the game, you can sprint that is attached to a stamina meter and you can also then climb also attached to that same stamina meter. What's impressive here is the climbing, I thought it would be maybe key spots, you know ladders, finds. That's not the case, if it's vertical you can absolutely scale it. Alongside this then we do get our trusty bike as well, it's a hovercraft vehicle of sorts that we build in the opening maybe 30 or so minutes of gameplay. It can even be customised with upgrades thanks to an in-game currency that can be uncovered. On this though we can accelerate, reverse, strafe and generally just get lost in the game's world and I promise you it's an absolute pleasure to explore on this thing. The game though opens in your home village pre the gliding, you're preparing for your journey. Here you'll complete a number of quests but as you leave town that's when the real experience kind of hits you and I'm surprised to say I was actually a little bit overwhelmed by it. Not because of how much there was to do, rather lack thereof. I've grown so accustomed to games telling me do this, go there, Sable just says here's our world, go and explore. I was asking myself what if I go the wrong direction, should I be looking for something in particular? Why is there nothing on my map? Embrace this adventure of the unknown and I promise you it's unlike anything you would have played in recent memory. And that's not to say there's nothing to do either, it's just you've got to go and find that for yourself. The core concept you see, you need to collect what are free badges. These badges determine, let's say, your function in this world. The first you will receive that is a mechanics badge, soon you'll uncover plenty more. The games ask of you, find individuals populating this often barren landscape, assist them with tasks, be rewarded with a badge. If you get free of one type of badge and it feels right to you, you can take it to a mask maker and game over, you have chosen your future. The game it can be as short or as long as you would like it to be, they say the average runtime here right around 8 hours with plenty left to do, but I will say it's easy to get lost in this world for hours on end in the best possible way. The lack of direction here just leads to a fear of missing out on something you may not have uncovered. Quests then are largely based around heading to the only way markers in game and completing some sort of task from working with wildlife to scaling locations to maybe fixing an issue. The best way to describe these quests, simplistic puzzles often involving platforming and yeah, you need to figure out what mask do you want so you can maybe target specific individuals in the world. For me, I pretty much accepted any quest from anyone that I came along. The idea of that ending then as well, collecting free badges, taking it to what is like a mask maker to end the game, it was actually surprisingly strong putting that power in your hand as you simply take a Sable home. You know it's not an epic adventure, in fact I'd almost say small scale in I guess what is a large world, but I was hooked from beginning to end and I now have every intention of continuing to explore because I know there's so much more to uncover out there because I mean while on the Xbox there's still achievements out there. Outside of the quest then expect to trade, purchase goods, maps, things like that, even find collectibles. The latter, the collectibles didn't really work for me, it didn't fit with the vibe of the journey honestly. Now sure, they make you explore but there was something refreshing about the game simply telling me go and do your own thing and then it kind of gives you this system which is almost ticking a checkbox. 
problems wise it's got a few on the xbox actually game related on bike it can freak out occasionally clipping with something in the environment the climbing it doesn't always work as intended a quick though like repositioning typically resolve that issue also you can tap the left trigger to see the direction of a quest and it's accompanied by an obnoxiously large text box that obscures half the screen when you do have that quest active for me maybe make this just a little bit smaller so i can enjoy the visuals the big issue though unfortunately on the xbox and again i was playing on series x that is frame rate issues there's a pretty persistent stutter unfortunately as you explore especially when quests are active and you know text appears on your screen Overall for gameplay though, it was as unique as I had hoped heading out on this adventure, choosing your direction, choosing when to call it a day and end the game so to speak. You know, it's just a case of giving into that curiosity and while honestly it was a little bit uncomfortable for me at first, once I embraced it, it was a welcome break from the norm. It's just a shame again about that performance. So visually it's stunning, it's a beautiful world that I can't quite pinpoint, you know, hand drawn, cell shaded, it's got a very dynamic look to it that makes the image pop. But perhaps the most impressive bit, it's Sable's use of colour. The game you see it works on a 24 hour cycle, meaning sunrise and sunset. Now the colours will change, night will appear near black and white. It is absolutely stunning. On a couple of occasions I simply waited to see what difference day and night made to a specific location, especially a floating almost city in the sky that I came across. While it's not necessarily pushing the Series X then either, we do get 4K. It's a stunning looking game as I said, and like the gameplay, it's just trying something different. And the open world, the map, the mountains, that verticality, seriously impressive. The only visual issue I did notice, some minor popping throughout the game, especially when it came to the foliage. So audio finally, absolutely stunning. The music, incredible. A highlight, actually, a focal track that accompanies the title screen. It follows the prelude moments of the game. That's when I knew we were onto something good. It's not a game with a huge amount of audio, honestly, but what they've done, I really like. It plays into the almost meditative style. It's often beautiful, sometimes haunting, and they have sounds that accompany these towns that are not necessarily realistic, but they add so much character. A sound of a whale as one example, which I won't spoil, but you will know it when you hear it. The only real downfall of audio, there's no voice acting at all. So the final verdict in Sable is unlike anything I've played in a long time. The gameplay won't be for everyone though, it's as I said all down to your desire to explore. It's built around our natural curiosity and if you want something that's gonna guide you, you know, tell you what to do, I'd strongly advise against this. Also no combat, some will say that's boring exploring a barren world, but its design is so strong that I thought it was a bold move that paid off as like a very minimalistic character study. The audio then, the visual design, it just basically tops it all off. Sadly though, with the current performance issues on the Xbox, we do need a patch to smooth things out as it definitely breaks that immersion. I would also describe it as relatively frequent, so for me as it stands, still a great 8 out of 10 because I want to go back into this world immediately, I actually regret stopping when I did. Now will you be adding this one to the library then, or is this one just a little bit too relaxed for your liking? With that then, hit subscribe, join us for weekly Xbox reviews, deals and Game Pass breakdowns, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.